this time, I'd like to give the mic to one of the A members, uh, Mr. Uh, Belcourt. I just want to make a few comments. I'm not going to use up a lot of time. I've been uh, traveling throughout the United States since leaving Wounded Knee, trying to establish a national defense fund and an organization for a support committee. And everywhere I've went, you know, throughout the United States, even down into Redneck country in Texas, I found out that we had the majority of the support of the American people. A lot of the remarks that were made here were false by Mr. Patterson. I've dealt with Mr. Patterson before. The American Indian Movement has dealt with these agencies sitting right here at this table before. We presented 20, a 20 point solution paper to them in November, the 1st through the 7th. And they told us that within 60 days they would give us an answer to those 20 points. There's a lot of people in this gathering here that are familiar with them. Among them, Mr. Burnett, who is a co chairman of the Trail of Broken Treaties. <laughs> And after the 60 days were up, it only took the government 15 minutes to answer those 20 points. And they turned each and every one of them down, including a treaty-making commission. And I assure you that a lot of the things that were said here today will also be turned down. I would like to see, before you know that meeting takes place a week from now, at least Aberyst and Jackson and all these people that have been sending others in here to investigate from their staff Name, you know, commission hearings to be held here on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation with an open forum, in a public hearing to get to the bottom of all of this. This is something he can do immediately to stop the tyranny that is going on here on Pine Ridge. We also know that throughout the polls that were taken, the Harris poll, for instance, that we have the support of the people. In fact, the poll that was taken on who needs to is that we had 51% support of the American public. And the federal government only had at that time 21%. Two weeks later, two weeks later, they took another poll where they asked if they thought the American public, if they thought Richard Nixon was involved in the Watergate issue. 63% of the public said they thought he was involved. So the American Indian movement and the people that were in Wounded Knee had more support than the President of the United States. That's where we're at, and we got to realize that. I think that nothing really is going to be done until Indian people continue to hold meetings like this, and they demand the right. Telstern made the remarks when he, after the Wounded Knee occupation ended, that the back of the American Indian movement was broken at Wounded Knee. Now, you all know differently. We know that a lot of things happen out of Wounded Knee. A lot of other tribes, a lot of other Indian organizations across this country benefit from the stand that was taken at Wounded Knee. In my state, in the state of Minnesota, just two weeks ago, the Minnesota Chippewa tribe, in support of what is happening at Wounded Knee, revoked all of the leases of the resort on the lakes of the six reservations of that state, which immediately affected 600 resorters. And when they renegotiate those leases, that money is going to go directly to the tribe and not to the Bureau of Indian Affairs anymore. Because they did recognize a treaty on December 10th of 1972 in the state of Minnesota. The federal government said that the state of Minnesota was in violation of the treaty. And that the Indian people had the right to hunt, fish, gather wild rice, and trap free of state law. So the federal government has set the president for honoring treaties. And they can honor the Treaty of 1868. But what's more important than that is what is taking place right now. We know that the agreement that was signed on April 5th, and I was a party to that agreement. I was one of the negotiators throughout that agreement and the signing of it. And as we were signing that agreement, those people that were in Wounded Knee know that this was happening. The very time that we were signing that agreement, <coughs> marshals were shooting at two of our men driving a little... Japanese foreign car down the highway. And they had a fire going at Wounded Knee. And I've had witnesses come up to me since the second signing of the agreement about the violation. And I've had people talk about petitions that they have signed, stating that the American Indian Movement was not responsible for the looting 
and the clothing and the, the food and other things that were thrown, thrown around in the people's homes and they let the photographers in. The Bureau of Indian Affairs police were responsible for that. We also know that when Indian people were herded up onto that hill, up on that hill the day that they surrendered, they were surrounded like animals. For seven and a half solid hours, they weren't allowed water, go to the toilet, or they didn't feed them. There was babies among that group. This is the federal government. This is the decayed, corrupt federal government that we're dealing with at the present time. And if you go back a little bit further in the history of the Wounded Knee takeover, the people that we were dealing with then were Ehrlichmen and Kleindien, Garment and people like that. Where are they today? I was surprised that they could come up with five people out of the administration today to meet here that weren't under indictment or suspected in one way or the other. And I'm sure, and I want to reassure, reassure the Okawa Sioux people and all Sioux people and all other tribes here in the United States that the American Indian movement is not going to stand by. And we make our same statement that we made prior to coming into the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation where they had restraining orders against the whole movement, that we are not going to stand by and watch our people be brutalized anymore, Indian women's daughters being raped, Indian homes being firebombed on this reservation or any other reservation in the United States, and $25,000 bonds and 11 indictments and possibilities of over a hundred years in prison is not going to, stake, to stop the American Indian movement for, for, from protecting Indian people's rights in this country. And I assure you that we are on standby now. There's a camp being set up right in Marvin Franklin's backyard in Oklahoma at the present time. And we're going to be dealing with people like Marvin Franklin right there in Oklahoma. The American Indian movement is here to stay. And I'm sure it's going to be a long, around, a lot longer than these gentlemen sitting right at this table here today. Thank you. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, we Indian people have been through hell and back, but we have always taken it on a chin silently. <laughs>